Hi, it's Malcolm here from Bets by Electrics. Just going to show you the Navi 3 pod drive today. Got the boxes that's come in, so I thought we'd open them up and show you what you get in a Navi 3 pod drive and the controllers that come with it. So let's get going. I'll just get this pod drive out of its box. Open it up. There's a couple of accessory boxes on top. And of course the instructions, which you should always read first, with some safety tags in it. And we'll just put the accessories to one side. We'll get to them later. It's nicely packed. Nice bit of foam there. Lift the pod drive out. And get the box. And put it there. Okay. Well, as you can see, it's the same motor as the uh, Navi 3 outboard. So it's a nice solid piece of aluminium. The skeg is aluminium, so it's all nice and solid. The propeller is 260mm diameter, 171mm pitch, and uh, it spins at 2300 RPM. The, uh, in the end of the propeller is the anode, there to protect the uh, aluminium from corrosion, and they provide you with an Allen key in the accessory kit with, to undo that when necessary. The uh, being, motor being inside the aluminium and underwater, that's how the heat is dissipated from the motor and keeps it cool. And then we've got the three cables coming out of the motor, which are about 500 mil long to the plug. And then you'll see it's got uh, three bolts here to secure it to the boat. And then this wedge here. The idea of the wedge is that uh, you can grind that down to match the shape of your hull. And uh, that way keeping the uh, pod drive vertical and the propeller shaft horizontal to the waterline, which is the most efficient way for a propeller to drive and get the best out of your, uh, your range of electrical power. It's a 48 volt system. So uh, come to that layer with the accessories. Some people may want to put this in a, a cassette so they pull the unit out of the water when they're sailing and put a plug in to plug the hole and put it back down when they need it. Some may wish to try and, I know some of the sports boats with their open transoms that I see them swinging up little outboards on the back and they don't want the, all that weight at the back or the look. Some people don't want the look. You may want to do it, you can just do the normal AV3 outboard, but you may want to do something smaller or more discreet and have a swinging up mechanism on your transom. It may be more aesthetically pleasing, so you're not stuck with just having it always through the hull. There may be other options that you'd like to do that you come up with that uh, suit your needs the best. Okay, we'll just see what they, else they go. And there's the accessories boxes. We'll put that to one side. We'll grab out the uh, controller. So that's just the motor. We need something to control the speed and convert the DC into the... Uh, Signals needed for the BLDC motor. Okay, so there's our controller there. And it's a nice solid aluminium box, which is great for getting rid of the heat on the electronics. And there's about 1.5 metres of cable, which go here to plug into the, the motor on a waterproof plug. So all up, there's approximately half a metre here, one and a half meters there, so there's two meters of cabling from the controller to the pod drive itself. You need to mount this in a nice, uh, dry, safe location. On the side of the uh, controller here is a little plug for the communication cable to the throttle, and then they provide you with an Anderson plug and about a 1.2 meters of uh, battery cable to go to your uh, your batteries. They've also given Give us a five meter communication cable for the to get to the throttle if needed. Jumper leads if you're using lead acid batteries, and a set of leads with an isolator to get to your batteries as well, lead acid ones, and the Allen key and bolts to secure down the uh, electronics. They're all supplied. So we'll put them to the side. You can said you use lead acid, or you also can use lithium batteries. And Epropulsion sell a range of lithium batteries, 
two of the units that we have are what we call the E80, which is just around four kilowatt hour, and the E175, which is around nine kilowatt hour. So that you can use them individually to power the pod drive, or you can parallel them up and get even greater capacity and range. So we'll just move that down. And we have two types of throttles. This one's been out for a while. This is the standard um, deck mount controller. Some of you might have seen that. It has a solar panel on the front which keeps the batteries charged up inside of this because it can hook up to the uh, Navi 3 pod controller by Bluetooth so there's no need for cabling communication cabling. And then the uh, standard blue tag goes in this little spot here to uh, for the safety issue. Throttles on the controller here and the display gives you battery capacity and, uh, and, and amount of power and everything you're using. Sometimes with the Bluetooth there may be, depending on your boat structure, there may be a cabin structure or something in the way which is stopping the Bluetooth signal. So you can wire it up with a cable from the controller, that plug, and on the bottom of this controller is another plug and you can do a hardwired um, connection. All these cables they supply are plugs, so there's no need to actually physically wire anything. It's just a matter of plugging in and away you go. So it's a plug and play system. Okay, so that's that controller. We have another controller, a side mounted controller. And uh, it's what you traditionally more see in a sailing boat on the side of the cockpit wall. So we'll just get it out of its box. There's the throttle. We can supply the two safety tags and a display plus there's more cables in the in the bottom a short and a long one because we need the little short one to go between these two devices we'll just through the operation first to use when you lift the lever and swing it forward and reverse and it clicks in in the middle for uh, neutral the top of the lever can be removed which is a good advantage on a sailing boat because it, it helps to avoid the sheet, you know, the, the main sheet or anything wrapping around it and uh, getting fouled on the throttle. It's four screws to hold it down and a plug at the back, or two plugs at the back for the control. We'll just turn the display over as well. We'll go through the wiring. There's one plug socket on the back of the display. It goes from there to one of the plugs here on the back of the throttle. Then from the throttle, it goes, plugs in to the controller. That's all there is to it. The display here, you screw to the bulkhead. They provide a gasket to go behind it. And once you've screwed it down, then there's a sticker here to go over the front to hide the screws and let you know what each of the buttons do. So it's a nice, simple system to install. As I said, you can either use lithium batteries or, or lead acid. Uh, please. You'll see all that information on our webpage. Check it out. We've got uh, other outboards and sail drives and inboards. So um, thank you for watching. And uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you.